Welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name's Christina. And in today's video, I want to show you how you can do some upcycling as well as some redesign just for some fun, amazing projects for around your home and create some really nice, elegant pieces. So I'm going to talk you through all the supplies, material and design in which I do to create these projects. Plus, stay to the end because I've got an extra bonus. Let's get started. So I want to show you how, just with some throw rugs from Ikea, don't ask me to pronounce that. I already have horrible pronunciation, so I'm not even going to attempt that. <laughs> Using some materials I already have, as well as some Velvet Plus and super chunky thick yarn, I'm going to go ahead and put a boho style kind of throw pillow together with these Ikea rugs. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use a design that is kind of a geometric shapes. Just play around a little bit. I mean, sky's the limits when it comes to what you'd like to design, but just putting some rhythmic pattern to it and I'm gonna do a no sew. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my hot glue gun with the Gorilla Glue and just lay out my design. Now, because I only had a few colors in the super chunky yarn, I decided to bulk up a little bit of the thinner yarn that I had and I'm going to show you what I did. Using a crochet hook at eight millimeters, I'm just going to put together a string of stitches and just that alone is going to make this a super chunky. So all I'm going to do is make a knot to start my stitches. So just crossing over, making a little tail, I'm just going to pull a little yarn through there and basically make a start stitch. Then put my crochet hook in, grab the working yarn, pull it through. That's it. Just going to do that a couple quick times just to show you just in case you're not a knitter. Again, you're just going to let that crochet hook grab that working yarn and you're just going to keep pulling it through and you're just going to make a nice long ring and you can use the back side or you can use the front side. For this pillow I did a row of 85 stitches but again you can use any color you can make any kind of design that you want but I just wanted to give you an idea of the endless possibilities that you can do just with a throw rug for $3.99 and some probably materials you already have at home. So using the really super thick chunky bulk yarn I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add in some more elements to it. And again, you can create any design you want. So I'm just having some fun playing around and seeing what I could create and with leftover materials I already have. The Gorilla Hot Glue is actually safe for fabrics. It's just recommended to put your uh, hot glue gun at a little bit of a lower setting so it's more fabric friendly, but it works really well. And for washing, I just recommend being a little bit careful and not putting it in the dryer. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna actually make little button balls. So I'm just gonna tie a little tiny knot then I'm going to secure it, make sure it's nice and tight. Then I'm just gonna cut it and then I'm gonna place it in random areas just to give again a more geometric shape and adding more design to this throw pillow. So to give a seam or seamless look for your throw pillow between the two rugs, I'm just using a trim made out of burlap and I'm going to show you how I am gluing. So I also wanted to show you I have a liquid stitch as well as a tacky adhesive glue. I'm still going to use my hot gun but in case you don't have a hot gun these are available and they'll be in the description box below. So I just flipped the rug and now I'm going to create a seam. So I'm just going to run my hot glue very carefully just a nice somewhat of a straight line and then I always recommend to do this in tiny sections because if you've made a mistake it's going to be very difficult to correct it if you've done a whole seam across so doing small sections really helps and you want to also make sure that you're not missing any gaps so that seam I actually got this at the dollar store 
and it's just burlap that's been braided. And I thought this would be perfect. It's nice and sturdy, and I'm just, just gonna help that seam line. And it's also just gonna make things a little bit more cohesive. This is a total option. You don't have to do this. I just thought this would help with the yarns that I've attached and now putting these on the seams. Just kind of made everything kind of have this continuity to it. Really easy, just adding and gluing. So the fringe on the sides was a little bit ratty, so I'm gonna go ahead with a dog brush, but you can use any brush and just comb it out so it's just nice and light and fluffy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just glue a one side before I go ahead and put my inserts in. And again, really important just to work in those small sections. So I had some tassels from a while back and I actually had six of them, but I only used four on each corner. And I'm just using a king size pillow. But when I looked, it didn't think it was going to fill it completely. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of polyfill just to give it a little bit more body and a little bit firmer. If you have old pillows or throw pillows or towels you're not using, you could use those for inserts as well. So I'm gonna take a macrame cording and just pull it apart into three sections. And this is so easy. I'm really just gonna make wagon wheels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just grab one section. So it came out in three. So this is one third of that macrame cord. And I'm gonna lay it flat and just twist it into circles. I always see really cool throw rugs or floor mats and they always have different shapes on them and adding circles to square you know floor mats is such a great way to add really interesting element to something that's just all one color so i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this dark kind of a chocolatey same style uh, macrame and I'm also just going to use some leftover yarn and go ahead and again just make some wagon wheel circles out of the same thing. So again, you can use leftover materials that you already have just to do the exact same thing. And maybe you want to be really colorful with it. Again, totally up to you. Go with your style. Go with your vibe. Now, because I had exactly three of the IKEA throw rugs, this kind of worked out perfect. So I'm just going to show you exactly how I applied these. And again, this no sew. So I'm just going to use a little piece of cardboard and I'm just going to lift up these circles that I've created, add a little bit of this hot glue adhesive and lay them down flat. Now, because they're so thin and they're very delicate, what I do recommend is just to go around and lightly lift a little bit and make sure that the areas that maybe the glue didn't get are secured. And again, I had showed you the fabric adhesive, so if you don't have a hot glue gun, no problem at all.
I'm going to try and create a wall art mirror combo. So I see so many beautiful, interesting ideas with all kinds of different fabrics and materials creating frames and designs for a round mirror. So I wanted to give this a go and I'm going to try it with contractor shims. And let's see how that works. First thing I'm going to do with these is I am actually going to give these a color wash. And I think I'm just going to use the graphite or charcoal chalk paint color. And I'm just going to do a nice light wash with 50% paint, 50% water. And I'm going to show you the exact design that I do. And let's see how this turns out. So I wanted to map out the circumference around this mirror and have a pretty good understanding of how many contractor shims I'm going to need, as well as how I'm going to lay this design out. Now, there's a thick end and a thin end, so this is a kind of important when you're mapping it out. I'm going to use the graphite chalk paint, and I'm just going to give this a color wash in this. It's like a dark gray black color. And again, it's 50% paint, 50% water. Just going to use an old chip brush. I want it to be very sporadic, but I'm making sure that I've got all the edges, so both sides and the top and the bottom, but I want them to look a little bit different. So some are going to be darker and some are going to be lighter, but that's what I'm going for. Just wanted to give a special thanks to the Sorry Girls, as it was a huge honor because they actually mentioned my channel. Anyhow, if you're not already subscribed to their channel, I'm going to leave their link in my description box below as you should definitely give them a subscribe. It's an amazing channel. I absolutely adore their videos and everything that they create from all kinds of thrift, DIYs, create it yourself, home renovation ideas, you name it, A to Z, they've got it. Amazing creative ladies. So again, special thanks and don't forget to hit their subscribe button. I highly recommend you'll really enjoy their channel. So I color washed all 56 of the shims and now I'm gonna place the thicker end towards the mirror and I'm just gonna spatially align them how I wanted them, just creating that star burst kind of look. Then I'm gonna take another layer and I'm gonna do the opposite. So the thin layer will be on the inside and the thicker layer will be on the outside. I'm going with the shiplap kind of look, but in that circular uh, sunburst look. So you could use just plain wood glue. You don't have to use hot glue. The hot glue just sticks a little bit faster, but just in case you don't have a hot glue gun, it will work just as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue this down. So you can use any color wash color you want, depending on your home decor theme and colors that you choose. You could actually just paint these. You could create some designs individually on to the shims. So again, it's just endless with the amount of ideas that you could do with this. I've seen these in the stores as well, and some of them are a little bit on the higher price, ranging from, depending on its size, from say $79 to up to $200 or more. So the contractor shims cost me $10, and the mirror I think cost me $3.99 at the dollar store. So pretty inexpensive, just with a few moments of your time. So I found a piece of wood and I put a back brace onto that so I could hang it up. And I actually just wanted to place it in the center because I knew that I was overlapping these. So I didn't want it to infringe on my space that I needed to put it on there. So again, I just did that so I could create a little bit more stability. I'm just going to run some extra glue around the back side here. And I'm also going to create a little bit more of a frame just to keep them nice and secure because there is quite a few of them. If you don't have chalk paint, you could always use a little bit of acrylic paint if you have some already at home and pick a color you like to do the color wash.
went ahead and I've removed the bottom wood brace that was originally on here. It just kind of opens this up for the look that I want to go ahead and hopefully achieve. And I am going to put a coat of chalk paint in French linen. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that all over the chair first, and then we're going to get into the next steps. With any chalk painting I do, I always start with a moist paintbrush. This just helps move that paint around, and I also use a lot less paint. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a really good coverage. As you can see, even with it cleaned, it's in pretty rough shape. When you're dealing with very fine corners and edges like chairs like this, really important to use a little paint at a time. And you want to do lots of feathering. Because there's so many angles, you don't want the paint to clump up around those edges and corners and around these circular wood components as well because it just looks bad. It looks like a bad painting job when you've got like drippies and runoff and, and it dries like that. So lots of feathering and again, just adding that bit of water will help smooth out the paint a little bit. But I do want it to be somewhat thick because I do want a little bit of texture. So this is where you're going to see me doing some random brush strokes. Lighter paint on darker furniture, you may need one and a half to two coats and let it fully dry. So here's the beautiful seat cover, probably from the 1960s something. It was pretty stylish then. Plaids were in. I am going to use a throw pillow I already have, and I have leftover fabric. I only have a little bit left of just some beautiful, simple linen. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this throw pillow to the chair because I really want to make it kind of poofy, and I'm doing this on purpose. So I'm gonna use this leftover linen fabric, and because linen is a little bit on the thinner side and I'm covering a very dark material, and this is quite light, I'm gonna go ahead and put two layers on. So this is the first layer. Using a staple gun, really easy. You just really wanna pull your fabric in nice and taut, so just smooth it right out, and just before you attach any of your staples, just give it a nice tug and try to hold it into a nice firm position. And doing the corners, again, you just kind of want to do small little folds. Every chair is going to be a little bit different. Some are going to be circular, some are going to be more squared. So you just kind of have to feel with it and just really pull the fabric. And you, it's actually a lot easier than it looks. I don't have any upholstery experience whatsoever or sewing for that matter. So if I can do this, you can do it. I just have a thing for really, really plush seating like they used to do back in the early 1900s. They used to use horse hair inside, so it was really poofy. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few elements, and I'm going to use this ribbon, which is kind of a burlap ribbon, and some lace trim that I got at the dollar store. So the burlap trim, I'm actually going to start it just from underneath the chair and I cut off enough of the ribbon to go all the way around and because of the shape of the chair, it's a little bit like thinner at the top and a little bit wider at the bottom. So all my edges are not the same. I'm going to go ahead and give that ribbon a little bit of a fold with that hot glue and just keep wrapping it all the way around, but I'm only going to do one end of it first. Anytime I apply a trim, I like to fold it and then place it on. I don't want just a rough cut edge kind of just glued on or sewed on. So it's really good to fold the edges and then that way when you place it on, it looks properly hemmed. So I went around and I also did the very top of it. And again, it's just securing it and making sure it's well placed but not too tight so it, the fabric and the seating has a little bit of give. So I'm going to add in again another little element here of some 
lace. So I'm just going to place that at the top. And again, I always fold my ends and then I place them on so it's more cohesive. And I'm just going to go ahead the exact same way and wrap that around. It's always best, again, just to do small sections at a time because you can always take your scissors or an X-Acto knife and cut the glue if you've made a mistake. But when you've glued a huge section, it's just a lot more to try to correct. So small sections are really important. For a curbside find, it was pretty inexpensive to go ahead and give this thing a facelift, so it's amazing what you can create for an accent chair with very little money. So I've made a paint mix of en fleur, which is like a cocoa brown. Just gonna use an old chip brush, some shop towels. So I always like to start with a moist, shop towel or clean lint-free rag. This way it doesn't soak up the color as I'm doing what I term a ragging technique. So I don't want to wipe away all of the paint wash because I want to leave a little bit of texture with the wash behind. Using this technique with a nice contrasted light color base and dark wash or vice versa, a dark base and a light wash can give such a beautiful decorative finish effect. You're just using the textures of the rag to really create the design of the chair. So there's really no right and wrong to this type of technique. It's just playing with the paint and having some fun with it. If you want your texture to be more pronounced, just wait for your first wash to be completely dry and then go ahead and do another wash if you want it to come out with a little bit more depth. I'm going to go ahead and clear wax seal this and then I'm going to add some accents of white wax. So clear wax really easy, clean cloth, lint free or you could use a waxing brush if you have one. Really important not to apply too much wax. You really don't need a lot. You just need to use a little bit of elbow grease and rub it around really well. So I kind of treat wax and paint kind of like makeup. All I want to do is shadow edges and corners and just create this little hue of lightness that just hit all those high points and a little bit in the texture as well. So I wanted to create my own ottoman. So I have some leftover legs, I have some brackets, and I had some boards cut out in the size that I needed, as well as I have some cotton batting, and I'm just gonna hot glue gun that to the sides. All of the materials that I use on my tutorials are in the description box below. So we decided to go ahead and we're gonna put some pilot holes in. Because it's pine and we just don't want the wood to split, sometimes this can be a really good idea. With fresh wood, sometimes it's just easier to make a smaller hole before you put in a thicker screw and it will prevent from the wood to split on you. So we used one and a half inch wood screws and fastened all the boards together to make a square. Now that the frame is completed, we're just gonna put on the square top that matched the same as the box. 
going to be adding in these wood blocks but just for a little bit more of a fasten seal we're going to use a little bit of wood glue this is so we can attach those brackets for the legs if you don't have any power tools not to worry pine is a very really soft wood so you could manually do this as well going to go ahead and put that cotton batting all the way around the box and you can just use hot glue or even the wood glue will hold it as well. I'm going to go ahead and use the exact same colors I did on the chair. French linen for a base and on fleur for a color wash using that chalk paint and I'll probably add a little bit of that white wax just to give it a light shadow of dimension. So using a standard king size pillow, I'm going to go ahead and use this as my top so it's nice and poofy. I really had an image of going with a burlap, but the only burlap I could get my hands on was really dusty. So I was a little concerned about that. So I decided to just use an old canvas uh, material that I had, and I'm going to go ahead and fasten that with my staple gun. So again, it's just pulling it really taut and straight and making your folds nice and even. So similar with my chair seat, I'm going to go and use this ribbon, it's burlap ribbon, and I'm just cut out a piece to wrap all the way around the ottoman and using the hot glue gun, just lightly as well as small little increments, just so it's nice and folded and fastened well. And again, if you don't have a hot glue gun, no problem. They have the fabric material glue that will do just as well. I had some leftover trim, so I'm going to go ahead and add this on top for some more embellishment. So this will be part one of the three things I'm going to be doing with this fireplace that's a little bit bland, if not a little too dark. So I originally painted this because all of the tile work around this was probably from the early 80s, so I just decided to go with a simple black and gray. But now that I'm changing things up, I decided to use this peel and stick wallpaper. And what I really love about this wallpaper is the design on here looks so three-dimensional and really super easy to apply. So a ruler, a pencil, an X-Acto knife, and something flat to help smooth it down as you apply. Depending where you want to put your wallpaper, you're just going to have to measure it out and then cut into small sections. Cutting around this fireplace pipe was a little bit tricky, but with some math and, and the X-Acto knife, I was able to pull it off and it was pretty smooth and seamless. But this is so much easier than using wallpaper paste. And this is great for a little tiny area that you just wanna brighten it up, do something different. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And please, if you have any questions, I love reading your comments. So leave me a comment in the comment box below, as well as if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and notification bell. It's gonna tell you exactly when I upload my next video. And until then, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you soon.